What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Designer YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create typography type comic book halftone effects. Easy for me to say. If that sounds good, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and comment any suggestions you have for future tutorials down below. Let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is open up Photoshop. The document I've got is 2,400 pixels wide, 1,600 pixels high. And the first step we're gonna do is create the background. So we need to open up our layers panel. If you don't have that open, it's window layers. You'll see the background layer and you need to click on the padlock to unlock it. Then press Control J or Command J on Mac to duplicate the layer. And on the top layer, right click Blending options, come down to gradient overlay, click on the colored preview box, then click basics to open it up and click on the third option, which should be called black, white. Click okay, okay. We now need to merge the two effects together, which is the black to the white space to the white background layer. So in the layers panel, hold, click the first layer, hold shift, click the bottom layer, right click, scroll all the way down and merge layers. Don't worry too much about the color for now. We can edit that all afterwards. At the moment, we're just creating that half tone kind of spotty looking effect. So now come up to the top, click filter, pixelate, color half tone. The radius here is asking you what size circles you want. So for this particular background, I find 25 pixels works well. If you want them slightly smaller, go for 15 or 20, anything bigger, 30 to 40. Click OK, and now you'll see our halftone effect, which looks pretty cool. The problem is I want this colored over a colored background. And at the moment, we can see it's not transparent. So the white space we actually need to remove. So to do that, we click our layer, come up to select, color range, use the eyedropper tool and click on the white space. This now is selecting anything white and we can press the delete key and anything white will get deleted. And now it's still flashing, so we need to press Control D or Command D to deselect. And there we have our transparent half tone effect. That looks pretty cool. Right, so now we're gonna add a background. We need to create a new layer and drag the layer to the bottom because this layer is gonna sit underneath the half tone effect. Get the paint bucket tool, color it in, select any color, we any color we like here. I'm gonna go for a sort of muted beige. Perfect, that looks good. I then want to change the black spots to white spots. So we're gonna do right click blending options, color overlay, and I'm gonna change them to white and click OK. That looks pretty cool. I actually want them a little bit further down the page. I'm just going to drag this layer, pull it down. OK, perfect. That looks good. OK, so next we need to create the explosion in the background. And to do that, we're going to use the pen tool, set the fill to transparent, stroke color to black, and size to 5. Come over to our layers panel, open up a new layer, click and then click the second point and just drag the handles slightly. That gives a sort of curve, curved effect. Click with the next point, come down again, whoops, and click away from the point. Click again, and then click away. And, and don't worry about getting this perfect to start with because we can come back and edit these afterwards. So once you've finished this and gone all the way around, it should look something like this. Okay, this looks pretty good. We need to color in the center though. So I'm gonna go ahead and select an orange color, something like that. Get the paint bucket tool and click. Then come up to the layers panel, right click on the new layer, blending options. And I'm gonna just increase the size of the stroke slightly, something like that. And then I actually want the explosion to come outside of the page. <clears throat> just 
centralize it a little bit. Perfect, that looks good. Okay, the last part of the design we need to do is the cloud. And to do that, I'm gonna come down to the shapes menu, choose the ellipse tool, fill, it's gonna be set to white, and stroke is gonna be transparent. And if you hold the shift key, it will make perfect circles for you. And what we're trying to do here on a singular layer is build up a cloud-like shape. You can do this and be as random as you like. And once you're finished, it should look something like this. Okay, that looks pretty good. What we need to do now is come over to our layers panel and press Control or Command J twice. So we have three identical cloud layers. On the very top layer, right click, blending options, hit gradient overlay, that should change it from black to white. We then need to hold the shift key and merge the very top cloud with the middle cloud. Right click, merge layers. And we're doing this again because the cloud explosion area also has the half tone effect in it with different colors. So now we need to come up to the top, filter, pixelate, color half tone. I'm gonna drop the size of the circles down to 15 and click OK. Perfect. Once again, we have a black on white, which is not right, so we need to click Select, Color Range, select the color white, press Delete, and hit Command or Control D. Now that looks like that hasn't actually done anything, but that's because we also have a, a white cloud underneath. But if done correctly, you should see the half tone circles appear on their own. Right, if we now right click on that layer, blending options, and we're gonna change the color of those circles. Looking for quite a pale orange color. Perfect, that looks good. The last thing we need to do with the cloud is add a black stroke. So on the white layer, right click, blending options, stroke panel, and I'm gonna add a stroke of 15. Okay, perfect, that looks good. Okay, now to create the text layer, go ahead and select the text tool. The font we're using is called Bazinga, and it's a free download, I'll include it in the description. And the word we're using is boom, with an exclamation mark. Center the text, looking good. On the layers panel now, press Control or Command J three times to duplicate the layer, giving us four boom layers. Hold Select, grab all the layers together, click on the group icon to group the text together, making it easier to use. Open it back up and with the I tool, hide the first two layers and right click on the third layer. This layer is gonna be our gradient. I already have my color set up, but to do an edit there, we need to click on the color palette, select the colors one by one, double click here, select the color, double click here, select your color, okay, okay, perfect. Looking good. We also need to create an inner shadow. So back on our blending options panel, select soft light, reduce the opacity to around 50%. It should give you an effect, something like that. Perfect, that looks good. Now, clicking on the first layer, select the eye icon again to reappear the first layer. On the fill tab just above, put zero. That will change the center fill part of the text, showing anything underneath essentially making it invisible. But if we were to add a stroke, that will become visible. So this layer is essentially gonna be our boom outline. You can see if we move that around, the layer is actually completely transparent, showing what's underneath. Perfect. Layer number four now, which is our bottom most boom layer, we need to right click, blending options, we need to do a color overlay. We're gonna change the color to white. We're then gonna add a stroke. And we're gonna change the pixels to 50. Change the color to white. Perfect, looking good. That white does get lost a little bit in the cloud. So what we're gonna do here is right click on that layer, scroll down to rasterize layer style. Now we're gonna go back on the blending options again. And add a drop shadow. 
Now, the reason why I had to rasterize that layer, because when you add a drop shadow, it will appear on the base text that we typed out and not the stroke we added. So the shadow would have got lost underneath the white space. Once we rasterize it, we tell Photoshop that we want the new stroke we added as part of the original design, and then include the drop shadow on all of the design, including the white stroke. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Last one to edit is layer number two. So we open that back up. We need to add a gradient to this layer. So we right click, gradient, click on the color palette here, click basics at the top, and the third option is black, white. Click OK, click OK. Come back to the layer, right click, rasterize layer style. Don't worry too much about the colors for now. They will become editable in a minute. Then we come up towards top, filter, pixelate, color halftone. I'm happy with fixed 15 pixels. That's the same size as the orange cloud underneath. Perfect, that looks good. Then we need to come up to select, color range, and we need to use the eyedropper tool on a bit of white space, click OK. Now you'll notice everything has become fuzzy. Once again, hit the delete key and control or command D. Looking pretty cool. So now we need to change the halftone dot effect from black to a different color. So we're gonna right click blending options, color overlay. And here is personal preference. I'm gonna go for, oops, a slightly red effect. Something similar to the bottom of the gradient. Perfect. I'm just gonna drop the opacity down slightly. Okay, cool, that looks good. Okay, lastly, I'm just gonna create some decorative items. I'm gonna get the pen tool, color set to light orange and stroke set to transparent, and just create some triangular looking explosion marks coming out, and perhaps some stars. And once that's finished, it should look something like this. Okay, now you can see our decoration is completely finished. I've added all the shapes in, added a few simple stars and a lightning bolt, which I've added a black stroke to. The text now has a slight noise to it, as does the orange explosion background, which is very simple to do. Click on the shape, filter, noise, add noise, and then select the amount of noise you'd like. The last thing, which I'm gonna show you how to do, I've added some semicircles into our cloud to give it more of an explosion look. To do that, I'm just gonna switch over to a new document our design is getting a bit busy. Click the pen tool, fill black, stroke black, and size three pixels. Now I've created this ruler area document size up. If you don't have your rulers up, you can press Command or Control R. He's drag from the side and pull down a ruler. So you're gonna click at the bottom point, up to the top, hold Shift, down to our bottom point, back up to the middle point, hold shift, until the handles meet our curve. Perfect, and that's it. And then copy and paste. Transform them, turn them around, make them smaller, as you like. And that's it. Ooh, a bit of a long tutorial that one, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, Give us a thumbs up and comment any suggestions you have for future videos down below. I'll see you next time.